hello everyone welcome back to my channel in this video i will talk about creating azure kubernetes service using terraform now if you are not familiar with terraform i would recommend you to check my channel in my previous video i have talked about terraform how you use terraform what is terraform and and what is the usual terraform life cycle i'll also link it and you might see a pop up on top and you can just go to that video now in this video, I will tell you how you create Azure Kubernetes service with multiple node pools using Terraform and I will have the, you will see the GitHub link in the description and you can just go through and run it as it is and your Kubernetes cluster will be created. Now before starting, let me introduce myself. I am Sushil. I am a certified cloud and DevOps expert. I have more than a decade of industry experience and I have helped organizations implement their cloud DevOps virtual on-premises journey and I'm passionate about fitness and technology and I share my knowledge using the tech guide dot and since this is a lab so there is not not a lot of theory to be covered I'll directly jump on to the code now as you can see I've, I've already run Terraform apply to save some time because it takes some time to create now, if you can see the folder structure on the left hand side if you can see the folder structure on the left hand side you see modules and a resource folder so there are two folders i could actually write a simple terraform script just one file and then it would be easier but i i also wanted to show you how you can use modules when you're using for each loop etc so i have i have a folder called modules in which i have modules i could have created subfolders etc if i had multiple modules but I just have one so I have, I have aks.tf and vars.tf in my modules folder and then I have a resources folder in which I have my actual terraform script so I'll be running my terraform commands in the resources folder that is what I'm doing so I've I've run it in my in my resources folder you see I where it is where it is i ran it in the resources folder so resources folder is my main folder now in resources folder i have main.tf let me close others i have main.tf i have terraform.tfvars and i have vars.tf now vars.tf if you would uh, if you worked on it it's it's the default variables.tf file which we can ignore for now i don't really have to explain what this is i just declared all the variables but then i have a main.tf and terraform.tfvars now main.tf is where I'm declaring, I'm writing my Terraform scripts and terraform.tfvars, again refer to my previous video if you do not know what tfvars is, tfvars is used to declare all the variable inputs so that I don't, it doesn't ask me those variables, values or inputs during runtime. So terraform.tfvars has the value of all the variables that I've declared in my script. Now in main.tf, I'll, I'll start section by section so that you know what I'm doing. Now in main.tf, I start with the Terraform backend configuration and I assume you will use backend. I mean, everybody uses backend in production. If it is just a test, you might not use backend, but obviously uh, the best practice is to use backend so that your Terraform state file is secure and multiple people, it, it, it enables collaboration. So backend, in, in backend, I declare my subscription ID, resource group, storage account, container name. This is the container where my Terraform state file will be stored. And then I have my provider definition where I tell, you, tell it that I'm going to use Azure RM provider and this is the version that I'm going to use. You can use any other version depending on the requirement and the values that you're going to pass. And then I define my variable. So this is where I'm telling you it what providers are required and so that it can download those providers and provision it but then i also have to define my providers uh, what is my subs um, subscription id and what is the configuration etc and then one thing that i'm doing is i'm assuming or one assumption that i'm making is when i'm creating this cluster i do not want to create a vnet and subnet you can do it but why i'm not doing it because i want to show you how you can use data with module if you do not have an existing vnet and subnet you can write your azure rm virtual network section and subnet or probably write a new module and then call it in the module section but here what i'm doing is i'm using data to 
get the value of an existing subnet so this subnet actually exists in my vnet and this is what they, this is why i'm using data there if you see this is this is my portal and this is a virtual network which already exists in a folder and then i have a i have a default subnet so this is what i'm i'm talking about i'm just trying to fetch value of this existing subnet so let me take you back to the visual studio and now you see that my I'm, I'm i'm calling this subnet and here comes the aks module now first of all let me explain you the module and then i'll take you how this is being called i'm creating i'm defining a module i can name it anything i'm naming it aks underscore cluster and then the source is my modules folder in my parent folder so this is the folder where my module is written and then i have all these values location rg name etc now when terraform runs it knows okay you're trying to call aks cluster where it is it is in modules folder so it goes to modules folder and it tries to read the files that are in modules folder now if you see this aks.tf is in my modules folder so i go to aks so terraform tries to read aks.tf and it sees that it is trying to create a resource named azure rm kubernetes Netis cluster and then it is trying to create another resource called azure rm kubernetes cluster node pool so what it does when i when i run this module when i run this command or this script it reads this module folder it goes to modules folder it reads the aks.tf and it tries to go through this configuration now if you see in this configuration i'm not hard coded anything everything is variables all these variables all these values are variables so i'm creating an azure rm kubernetes cluster with the name name will be passed from a variable called aks cluster name similarly location will be location etc etc now how does it get the value of these variables either i can pass it in the runtime okay or i can again pass it through my module so in this this aks dot cluster name this value because whatever value will be passed in aks underscore cluster name that will be the name of my cluster got it so this aks underscore cluster name is passed in my module so in my module this aks dot cluster name this is what will define my variable or cluster name value so this aks dot cluster name i create a variable or i could just write aks underscore test and then this would be my this would be my cluster name actually aks test so this is this variable this variable passes the value to this and this is eventually passed to my name uh, value right and similarly all these values are passed now one thing that is that that i'm doing one more thing that i'm doing is i'm creating a kubernetes cluster node pool now when i try to create a cluster it creates a default node pool which is fine but i want additional node pools also and it can be a scenario there can be a scenario where you want multiple node pools also created you, you want two three four node pools created so the best practice would not be to write this section each and every time multiple times i can use for each loop that is what i'm doing so i'm create i'm defining a cluster node pool i'm creating a variable user node pool and then i'm run running a for each loop on my user node pool now if you go to vars.tf and you see user node pool variable what i'm doing it's a map type variable and all these values are defined in this variable so these values it gets from vars.tf i mean it, it knows that these are the values and then in my main.tf if you see user node pool in my main.tf i create a user node pool and i pass values from a i, I know it's confusing but it'll be clear when i go to terraform.tfrs but just follow along so if you if you see this user node pool value this user node pool variable i create a variable called user node pools now why i am doing this see i could i could actually 
just pass this value there why i'm doing this is because i don't want to hard code anything i don't want to hard code anything in my main.tf i'm creating a terraform.tf ads for that i'll take you to that but just try to understand how this module ties with the module section or one more thing that will clear your doubt is for example i go there and in this i have a subnet section now I've created a AKS underscore subnet underscore ID. This is my variable. This is the variable that is uh, that is defining which subnet I want to use. Now, if you go to main.tf, main.tf again, remember main.tf is in resources.tf. That is why I've kept different name. Main.tf is in resources.tf and AKS.tf is in modules. So I in the aks.tf this is a variable aks underscore subnet id aks underscore subnet id and now whatever value i pass in aks underscore subnet id it will be the value of my vnet underscore subnet id now these are not the values i mean these are the default aks values lord let me take you to the terraform documentation so this is the Terraform documentation and all that you see on the left hand side it is actually the, the this is what Terraform expects this is not something you define and right hand side are the variables that you can define so subnet aks underscore subnet what I do is in aks underscore subnet I pass data dot hrm subnet dot subnet dot id and this is where my data block is useful i am passing an value of an existing subnet or i could just if i do not want to use data i can just pass i can just copy my subnet id and pass it like this i hope you understood how this module is tying with the resource and etc now all these values values now if i do not enter the value of these variables and i run terraform apply it will expect the values to be it will expect let me see how it completed i'll show you how what it was done now when i when i run terraform apply it will expect the value of these variables it will ask you to enter the value of these variables right because these are variables the value can be anything you have to define the value you have to enter the value that is where terraform.tfrs comes in and terraform.tfrs you enter those values so that it doesn't ask you the input during runtime now this is helpful if you have so many variables see i have i have, I have tens and 15 I, I don't know i have 15 20 variables i cannot enter i cannot keep on entering value during runtime or if i was using a pipeline to do this or if i have if i want to automate this i'll write terraform.tfrs and all the variables all the variables that you see for example there is this user node pools variable so i pass the value to my user node pools and i enter these values so whatever i enter in terraform.tfrs is the value that will pass to my variable and this will be the value that will pass to my left hand side and then these values will be passed to my actual aks.tf i hope this 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 is clear because a lot of my students get really confused when trying to understand how modules work and trust me every organization everywhere you go everybody is using module module really helps you automate it module helps you um, reuse it multiple times for example you see i'm i'm i've written this and now i can create any time or i can write multiple i can create multiple user node pools etc now one more thing that you have to remember understand is in my variable if you see in i this variable was map object type variable and that is where why it is helpful so what i'm doing is i am entering my pool 2 and pool 3 and i can i could just enter 2 3 4 5 etc i can use multiple uh, variable values and then it would create 4 5 10 uh, node pools also depending on how much i want so it really makes it variable and this is where you define what will be your node pool configuration user node pool configuration i want to create two node pools my node pool name will be pool 2 and pool 3 and how i define these names again you have to go to aks.tf you have to go to your node pool and your name if you see the name name is each dot key whatever my key is that will be the name of my node pool and here my key is pool 2 and my key is pool 3 that is my that is why my node pool name 
would be pool two and pool three. I'll have two node pools created along with my default node pool, and then rest you can understand mode etc. So my mode will be mode VM size will be VM size max ports will be user max ports. So user max ports will be the value of my power ports and the windows and etc. And I just ran Terraform apply before starting this video so that I save some time. It took it took ten minutes, seven eight minutes, and you see it completed. Now let me take you to the portal and. Let's go to home. Let's go to Kubernetes clusters. And you see, this is the cluster that it created. And I go to node pool. And you will see default pool two and pool three. I have pool two, pool three, and dev pool. Why dev pool? Because my a my terraform.tf vars. I have my node pool name as dev pool. I hope this helped and you understood what I'm doing and then all the values are from this this section. I hope this video helped and if this helped let me know uh, what else you would like me to cover and if you have any questions any doubts feel free to let me know in the comment section I will try to answer those questions. Thank you have a good day bye.